queues of people lining up to buy bread in Lebanon could soon get a lot longer. The country has virtually no grain silos. Instead, it relies on regular imports of wheat and other food grains. And those supplies are dwindling because of a military standoff between the two biggest suppliers, Russia and Ukraine. We have enough wheat for one month, stored at flour mills. There is no national reserve today without the silos. Almost 3,000 kilometers away in Yemen, shopkeepers and consumers are voicing similar fears. Some traders have begun raising prices already, even though wheat flour is available for now. We fear the conflict between Russia and Ukraine will create shortages of wheat and flour here. 29 percent of the world's wheat is exported from Russia and Ukraine, and it feeds billions of people. Major importers include Lebanon and Libya, where food prices are already surging by more than 300 percent. And the sudden halt in supplies has driven international wheat prices up to their highest level in 24 years. Analysts say that's likely to worsen food shortages, especially in emerging economies. For most of the agricultural products, especially wheat, uh, the market is quite shallow. The price is quite sensitive to supply shock. Wheat price will be shooting up quite significantly. And that means the poorest countries in the world will be in a very disadvantaged position. Countries that cultivate their own food crops are also not being spared. Most of Europe's fertilizer plants depend on Russian gas, and officials say they're bound to suffer as the conflict drags on. There will be consequences on the market for wine, grains and other sectors. There will be consequences on the costs of energy. There will be consequences on livestock feed costs or even supplies capacity. The EU says it's taking steps to protect its agriculture sector and consumers. But poorer countries cannot afford to extend such support, and their citizens could become casualties in a foreign war. Adam Amunu, TRT World.